This is how you max out your hockey overnight. And this is how you farm NPCs 10 times more efficiently. These are some illegal block spoofs tricks that you must know. The very first trick that we got here is how to take absolutely zero damage in lava. And everyone knows that it can be very annoying dying to lava wherever you may find it in the second sea or in raids. And this trick is gonna help you take absolutely no damage to it. And it's extremely simple to do. Probably the easiest trick on this whole list. All you have to do is simply stand still. And you might be thinking, what the heck, if I stand still to the lava, I'll just die. Well, here's a pretty cool fact that you might have not known. According to the way Bloxfoots is coded, you actually take no damage from lava if you don't move on it. The damage only registers when you move around, which is pretty weird, but I guess that's the way to take no damage. Moving on to the next ability, it's going to be specifically about the light fruit. Everyone knows that you can awaken the light fruit, and the first ability of the awakened light fruit might not seem that good at first sight. It's this pretty cool bow ability, where you charge up a bow and shoot it. But did you know that if you actually hold down the ability key, you won't shoot one arrow, not two arrows, but you will be shooting three whole arrows. This is a pretty straightforward trick, because most abilities in Bloxfoots can be held down to do better, but if you didn't know this, well, now you know. Alright, next thing I'm gonna be telling you guys about is the spawn protection in this game. Everyone knows how it works. There's two different types of spawn protection. The first is every player that's under a certain level cannot take damage from anyone regarding PvP. You can obviously still take damage from NPCs because if you couldn't, then what would be the point of starting the game? But the reason the Bloxfoots devs added this damage protection is because back in the day when new players spawned in, it would be extremely difficult for them to level up because they would start getting killed by players that are like 10 times their level. And everyone knows spawn killing can be one of the most annoying things in the whole game. There's actually two main islands in the first sea where you cannot take any damage. That is the Marine Starter and the Pirate Starter Island. And for obvious reasons, those are the islands with protection because they're the very first islands of the whole game. The next way to take no damage from PvP is obviously by just turning off your PvP. It's very simple to do. You just click right here and boom, you've done it. Next is a pretty cool Easter egg that doesn't have much meaning, but it's a pretty cool reference. If you head over to the cafe on the second sea and climb up the wall using any ability of your choice, and you look right over over here, you're actually gonna notice this text which has like its opacity on like 1% so you can barely even see it. And this text says it's real. That's literally all it says, but I'm pretty sure this is in reference to the very popular One Piece is real. And if you haven't seen that meme, this is what it is. The One Piece! The One Piece is real! Can we get much higher? Yeah, that was pretty funny. Anyways, the next trick I got for you guys here is about the height for the Kilo Fruit. Did you know that back in the day in Blocks Fruits, Rocket Fruit obviously used to be called the Kilo Fruit, but a lot of you guys already know that, but that's not what this trick is about. When you use many of the old Kilo Fruits abilities, you would actually get launched up into the sky and fall down. But did you know that the height you fell from actually used to have a damage multiplier, which means the higher up you were, the more damage you did with the Kilo Fruit. So say I fell from world height onto the floor while using a Kilo Fruit ability, then I would literally do like 10 times more damage. It was extremely overpowered. I see the reason that devs removed this because the Kilo Fruit is meant to be one of the worst fruits in the whole game, and having a damage multiplier would have been completely unfair. If you have a bad fruit that does more damage, it kind of just ruins the point of the whole game. Moving on to the next secret trick, I'm going to be talking about the Venom Fruit. Most people should know about the Venom Fruit. It's pretty popular, but you might have not known the secret thing about its one ability, the X ability. Once you transform with the Venom Fruit and activate this amazingly cool transformation, the X ability, which is called Noxus Shot, actually has aimbot. So if you're next to a player and you use this ability, it's literally instantly going to lock onto them, making it completely impossible for them to teleport. Even if they activate their life flight or literally do anything, they cannot dodge it no matter what. Anyways, the next trick that I got here has to do with the boat. And it's actually a pretty cool secret. If you head over to the factory on the second sea and you head right behind it, you're gonna notice a cyborg NPC. And this is literally Frankie from One Piece, if you didn't know. If you talk to this guy, then he's gonna sell you a lantern boat for 1.5k fragment. And before update 20, this actually used to be called the flower ship, and I think it's supposed to be the thousand sunny from One Piece, but it doesn't really look like it. Well, I guess they can't really make the boat that big anyway. It would be way too overpowered. But do I recommend buying this for 1.5k fragments? Um, not really. It's a pretty basic boat, and I recommend to save your fragments for like fruit awakenings or something more useful. All right, moving on, we got the most useful trick that you guys should know 100%, and that's how to max out your observation hockey as well as your normal one. For the observation, all you have to do is simply activate it, use up all your dodges, and just server hop. This is the fastest and most efficient way to level up your observation hockey because normally it takes a lot of time to reset your dodges. Next way is to level up your normal hockey, and this one is very, very cool, and something I mentioned in one of my first videos. All you have to do is simply equip the elemental fruit and buy the worst sword in the whole game. And if you want to use this trick to its max, 
make sure you don't have any stat points put into your sword. Once you do that, you're gonna find an enemy that doesn't have hockey. Try to find one of the most powerful enemies in the game that doesn't. All you have to do is head over to them, stand on their spawn point, activate an auto clicker, and equip that trashy sword that you bought, and boom. Just leave this overnight, and your hockey should be completely maxed out when you wake up. Next up is a pretty cool fact about the Love Fruits movement ability. Everyone knows about this, it's literally just a flamingo. And it's no surprise it can actually pick up your teammates. But did you know that this movement ability can actually pick up NPCs, even hostile ones, which is very, very interesting. I'm not sure why it exists, but this doesn't really have much practical use unless you want to take a trip with an NPC. Well, you can't even really take a trip because when you fly too far away, they literally despawn. Well, whatever. Let's head over to the next trick. This is a pretty cool one if you want to farm a bunch of fragments. All you have to do is head over into the third sea, head over to Hydra Island, and once you come to this specific area, you can equip the quest to kill an NPC who's called the Training Dummy. And once you first look at him, you might be kind of scared because you're going to notice that he actually has the Dark Blade, but don't worry. He only has the damage from the Dark Blade and has no other abilities to go with it. But one thing you should know before fighting this guy is that make sure you constantly spam him with abilities because if you don't spam him for a bit, then his health is going to regenerate all the way to max. And once you kill him, boom, you've gotten you 200 fragments. But you should know that you can only take this quest every hour, so it isn't that useful, but 200 fragments per hour is still a very, very good trade-off. Next is a fact about the sand food. Everyone knows about the sand food. It's a pretty popular food in the game, but did you know that it actually has one huge weakness that literally none of the other fruits in the game have, and that is taking double damage in water, which can be pretty bad if you're fighting against someone over water, but then again, when does that ever happen? All right, next up, I'm going to be telling you guys about this NPC called Eren. And no, I'm not talking about Eren Yeager from Attack on Titan. I'm talking about E-R-I-N. This NPC is located at the castle on the third sea. Once you head over to her, you can actually re-watch the Rip Indra versus My Game 43 fight, which is actually a pretty cool cinematic that plays once you head into the third sea. But in case you forgot what happened, or you just want to re-watch the movie, well, you know where to find it now. Well, speaking about their fight, the lore of this game doesn't really make sense because as most of you know, Rip Indra and My Game are actually brothers in real life, so it makes no sense that they would be fighting. Well, sometimes you just gotta switch it up for story, I guess. Next up, I'm gonna be telling you guys about a pretty cool sword that exists in the game, and this is the pole. And no, I'm not talking about the pole V1, I'm talking about the pole V2. But to get the pole V2, you obviously need the V1. The V1, you can get it from an NPC called the Thunder God, who's located at Upper Skylands in the first sea. The V1 is pretty trashy, so there's no real point of using this. Well, if you get to the V2, this sword is actually gonna get pretty powerful. And to upgrade the sword to its V2, you simply have to equip the Rumble Fruit and unlock and awaken all of the moves, which requires a total of 14,500 fragments. And once you complete all five Rumble Raids to awaken the fruit, you have to complete a sixth Rumble Raid with the fully awakened Rumble Fruit. Then you'll be teleported to an island in the sky where you can talk to the Thunder God NPC and then upgrade your pole to V2 for 5,000 fragments, which means in total, this is gonna cost 19,500 fragments. So do I recommend this? I'm not really sure because I haven't personally used the sword myself, but it looks like an extremely good sword. And in case you're wondering, the first ability is called Hand of God with 150 master requirement and the second one is called Electric Prison. And the one abilities of this sword do an average of 3,020 damage, which makes this sword extremely powerful. Next up, I got a trick that lets you become Spider-Man. And this actually has two different versions. The first one is the normal version and the second one is the budget version, which means one looks cool and one just looks kind of lame. The first way is to just simply equip the spider fruit and boom, once you use the movement ability, you're going to be swinging around like Spider-Man. And the second way is by killing the Fishman Lord, who's located at Underwater City on the first sea. Once you kill him, he has a chance of dropping this trident. And the Z ability of this trident lets you grapple hook. And that's why I said budget spider Spider-Man, because look at this. This isn't even really Spider-Man. This is like Batman with a grappling trident, I guess. Anyways, moving on to the next trick, I'm gonna show you how to get into space in Blast Fruit. And there's three different ways of doing this, and these all include infinite movement abilities. The first one is a light fruit. For this, you simply have to aim at the sky and just fly, I guess. The second way is by using the old Kilo fruit, which you can't really do anymore for obvious reasons. For this one, all you have to do is equip the umbrella ability and just infinitely fly into the sky. And the final way you can do this is by using the barrier stairs. They just let you, well, go up, I guess. But this is incredible incredibly difficult because you can't do this with the auto clicker or a macro or anything like that. You have to be physically active, which is kind of annoying. So if you want to get into space, I recommend using the light fruit. It's probably the easiest and fastest way. Alright, next thing I'm gonna be telling you guys is gonna help you a butt ton when it comes to farming NPCs. And you can literally use this in the first C, the second C, and the third C. It literally works everywhere. It's pretty simple and it also does involve guns. I know I've trashed out guns a lot in the past, but this is probably the most useful thing you can use them for. And it doesn't matter, you don't even need to have stat points added to your guns. You can just have a normal character build. For this, I recommend buying the slingshot or literally any gun that has a decently fast firing rate because that's the main thing for this trick. Once you do that, you just simply equip your gun. And what you're gonna use it to do is gather up enemies. It's incredibly easy to do, it doesn't require 
require much aim. You just point at them and click and boom. Once you do that, you're actually going to aggro your enemy, which means they're going to be attacking you no matter what. Because everyone knows when you try to group up enemies and block fruits normally, sometimes they just stop walking towards you for some reason. Even if you do like one damage to them, they follow you forever. And that's the reason you're going to be using this gun. Once you round them up, then you can group them in one place and use an area of damage attack, which is completely going to decimate them. And everyone knows that in blocks fruits, it's 10 times easier to farm if you group up your enemies. Because doing damage to multiple targets is better than doing damage to one. Next up is a pretty cool easter egg, and a lot of you new gen blocks fruits players might not know this, and I was one of them. If you head over to the cafe, everyone knows that there's this secret spot underneath. But once you climb inside, you're going to notice these two NPCs. And they might just look like normal NPCs who tell you about the titles in the game, but the skins of these guys are actually very, very special. These are some of the most OG blocks fruits YouTubers. The first one is Axori, who has a total of 1.2 million subscribers on YouTube. And the second one is Official Newbie with 964,000 subscribers. And that's it for all the tricks.